or top 10 brands in the list today, the CEOs are the brand managers. They are deciding how the brand is going to evolve. Last, the corporate brand is a new product brand. The companies can no longer hide, saying, I don't know, this is what the brand is doing. Nestle, Procter & Gamble, Unilever, all of these companies which once upon a time had the notion of a company behind and brands in front have all started investing in the corporate brand because there is no f secrecy left about the corporate brand. According to this ticker, there are seven minutes left. So I'm very happy to finish. If you have any questions, you can ask now. I don't know, Nikhil, if that is allowed in your format. Or if, you, if not, if you want to ask me questions later, you feel free to write to me on any of those places. So I'm hijacking uh, Ranjit's place uh, for, for a while. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Kiran Khalab. And I would like to share, for the first time when I met him, I don't know whether he remembers this or not, the first sentence that he said, and which still I, I still remember is, uh, he said that the primary responsibility of human being is to evolve beyond being a human being. And uh, because he says, he said that, you know, we are one of the species after dolphins, probably, you know, to a certain extent dolphins are aware. And uh, self-awareness. Uh, self so, so this still remains in my mind, and I think some of the speakers that we've had uh, this since morning, uh, our primary responsibility as financial advisors is to evolve beyond financial advisors. And uh, I think we look forward to Mr. Kiran Khalab again. I have had uh, wonderful interactions with him whenever I've met him. I request uh, Kailash Kulkani, Mr. Kailash Kulkani to come over and hand over a token of appreciation. So finally, as according to Mr. Kiran Khalab, uh, Kailash, one of the James Bond characters of our <laughs> industry comes. I was surprised there were no questions for Kiran Khal. Because I think the more I understand about brand, the more I understand that this is a big work. Sir, what is this a big work? These are all big, big brands. How will they become IFS? Kaise brand Can you answer that question? I am taking that privilege. No, nobody has asked a question. But if you could explain how an IFA can be a brand, to answer some questions. Yeah. So th there, is a, there is a small organization in Pune of uh, rag pickers who go from uh, house to house and they charge 10 rupees per month. And they separate wet from dry. And they came to us and said, we want to be a brand. So you can start from that end. I don't think it's to do with how big or small. It's to do with how clear or unclear. Okay, but how do we so communicate? So IFA, if you're in, as I said, a human being can't be a brand, but can the human being, can Mr. Jain, who spoke earlier about being himself, is being himself, is the idea behind his business. Having faith in equity as opposed to debt is the idea behind his business. Okay. Can he codify it? Can he articulate it well? And can he communicate it well? That's the brand. Oh. It's not to do with money. It's not to do with power, it's not to do with any of that, it's to do with clarity. So it's got nothing to do with advertising. I showed you, I showed yes. you it's not Zara, it's, uh, I showed you Zara, Zara has never advertised. Hmm. I showed you Body Shop, Body Shop has never advertised. So it is nothing So it's to got nothing to do with logo, it's got nothing to do with advertising. Absolutely not. It's only that experience which we're talking about. Experience that you create because you are clear about what you want to do. But then how, how is that, uh, how is the internet come into the picture? Because the internet earlier, the receiver of this brand was not able to talk back. Okay. 
today he can. So there is research around the world uh, which involves some 27,000 people online, 58 countries. 84% of the people said, I listen to other people, not to brands. Oh. And I act upon it. So what is happening is you might be speaking to your consumer, but the consumer is being spoken to by hundreds of other stakeholders. That's the difference because of the internet. Okay, okay. And so if you're not part of that conversation, you are going to lose. Oh, right, right. Thank you, sir, for the clarity. <laughs> Thank you. I'm doing a horrible job on time management. My apologies for that. Next, we have uh, Himanshu Vapak. Himanshu, where are you? Sir, come over, we'll say on time. Uh, not many people need an introduction of Himanshu. Is the uh, one of the key people at uh, Deputy CEO at Reliance Capital Asset Management. Uh, in, a, in an era where people jo hop companies every other year, he's been there since about 11, 12 years, a uh, long stint at Reliance, and uh, he's a member of ARN committee of AMFI. He has also been involved with other businesses across the Reliance Capital Group, and uh, has vast experience with ICHI and Escorts Finance. And he's going to talk to us about emerging trends in the mutual fund industry. Over to you, Vimanshu. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, first of all, I must admit as we start that uh, my presentation is very boring, and especially seeing the earlier two presentations. But I was told when uh, the, some of the privileges which come with the sponsorship rights is you, you, you can take 20 minutes to bore people. So, uh, so pardon me for that. But it's, I think the numbers are, uh, this presentation is purely about numbers. Uh, I think they say that it is very important uh, when you build your future, it is important to dig back into your past and learn from your the trends. I think idea here is to just share with you some trends in the business, in our industry and uh, get that bigger picture right. And if you have that bigger picture right, then a uh, lot of our efforts as IFAs, as independent financial advisors, and as manufacturers as well, uh, uh, are in the right place looking at the next few years from here on. So just a quick update on uh, where this industry, uh, global industry is. Uh, so we are less than 0.5%, Indian mutual fund industry is less than 0.5% of the global mutual fund industry. Uh, we have grown, uh, the global industry has still grown by seven times in the last 20 years. 50% uh, is equity in the global assets. Obviously, you all know that our equity contribution is less than 30%. But the scale of the global market, global industry is huge and inspiring. And that is one big picture which we need to always keep in mind, that uh, that is one level which we, we which will definitely move towards. So obviously, all of you know it, uh, the penetration level in the mutual fund space in India, uh, we, we have still about 6-7% of the, of, the, of the GDP. Uh, you have the numbers of the developed markets here to see. So that's again a very, very big indicator of where is the where is the, uh, uh, you know, the next level of growth and where would be reaching in the next few years. So look at it, these are few numbers. Uh, what has happened between in the last 10 years between 2004 and 2014? Uh, the investor folios have grown by three times and this is, and if you really look at it, all of this three times happened between 2004 and 2008. In fact, between 2006 and 2008. And between 2008 and 16, the, the investor folio uh, growth has actually been negative. So uh, if I actually correct the, if I remove that period of last five years, the CAGR growth has been over 20, 25%. AUM has grown by 10 times, a 20% CAGR. Touch points have grown by about 30 times, about 42%. Uh, distributors uh, have grown by 50 times. Uh, uh, that's a separate issue, how many of them are active, uh, but, but that's, that's the kind of growth. And schemes have grown by five times. 
uh, look at these numbers. Now, this is the first phase of growth, if I would say, after 2003. Uh, the, the AUM, while the AUM grew, but the bigger exciting trend was the number of folios grew, which I shared in the earlier slide. And look at what has happened after 2000, 2008. So it has been marginally negative uh, in the last few years. Uh, the, the first phase of growth was predominantly everything, uh, you know, was, was to do with equity. And hence, even today when people look at mutual fund, or if you talk to a common person about mutual fund, the perception is risk and perception is equity. Because that is what they experienced in the last few years, in the first few years of the growth. Now the point here is, you know, how many of you feel that the next few years you could have a trajectory which is what we saw in 2003 to 8. So uh, I think still pessimism in the room. Uh, so some of them have two hands up. So good. So which means that you know, so this four crore folios definitely have a potential to at least reach out to ten crores in the next five six years. Now what we need to ask ourselves and uh, is and the AUM obviously can grow to. Uh, 20 lakh crores to be the least, but are we geared up to 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 uh, uh, to achieve those numbers as both manufacturers and as IFAs? So look at these numbers in detail. So 2001 to 2014, 10x, 25% CAGR, and the projection, at least what we feel, is is it can be much more, but you know at least by 2020, 20 lakh crores. You think it is achievable? So this is only about 15% CAGR from here on. And, and I'm sure uh, all of you uh, should calculate if this is going to be 20 lakh crores and you have a uh, few thousand crores sitting here, what would be the growth in your assets and your investor base and are we preparing for it? So look at some of the numbers, uh, some interesting trends. Uh, are we at the starting of the bull run or are we at the end of bull run? Start. So look at some numbers from past. The maximum, uh, any idea what was the maximum net sales in equity uh, in the last few years, the peak net sales, 2008-9? It was about 50,000 crores net sales. Uh, so we are already... Uh, as the start of the year, we are already at about 14,000 crores plus net sales and if it goes on in the same trend, then we are going to break the 50,000 net sales record which was touched at the last peak this year. So at the starting of the year, the is starting of the bull run, you could, you could break that record and that's, you know, that's what it is important to understand that the scale of business is really, really changing. Uh, any idea what was the maximum sales in January 2008 in equity? Maximum gross sales in a month. So that was about, if I remember correctly, it was about 23,000 crores in one month. Now, uh, we are already touching last month being a special month, but uh, we are already at about 12,000 crores. Uh, and you all know why last month was special, right? So uh, some smiles here and there, but we are almost 50% of that uh, uh, now, and it's just the start. So again, can we have a month wherein we could do 50,000 crores of equity, pure equity net sales, uh, gross sales in a month? I think it's, it's, it would be conservative estimate in the, to, to reach in the next few, few years. So this is the projection of, uh, so after 5x growth in 10 years, I think uh, 2x to 3x in the next 5 years to 6 years is not, not very ambitious. Look at the SIP numbers. The last, you know, uh, again it, it, you know, really when I look at these numbers, it, it excites me a lot. You know, you know in 2003, the, what was the average tenor of an SIP? Anyone who would remember, and anyway, SIP was not the buzzword in 2003, right? What was the, what was the average tenor of an SIP? So you are very optimistic. It was about eight months, and uh, uh, 
you know, people started buying into that idea over a period of time. And that average tenure obviously is now much is, is, is uh, around uh, four and a half years. But look at the scale. The last peak when we were doing the maximum SIPs in a month in the industry were about four, four and a half lakhs. That was the peak SIP in about 2009, 10 in a month, four, four and a half lakhs in the industry. Last month number is about three lakhs SIPs. So it is not difficult to imagine that we would be having a month wherein we could be doing 10 lakh SIPs in a month. So are we geared up for that kind of scale and that kind of number? So today we have an input value of 3, 1300 crores in a month in SIP. I don't think it is unreasonable to expect that in next five years you would be having about seven and a half, eight thousand crores of SIP input value in equity only on account of SIP. Now are you thinking from that perspective and are you building your business case from that perspective? So look at how the trends reversed. It's, it's a busy slide and as I said, you know, I, I, uh, I told you in the starting that it would be boring, only numbers. But, but it is, you know, it's like, it is like uh, uh, going to the fund manager. You, in your heart of your heart, you would know that, you know, equity is going to do well. But still you attend a lot of fund manager meets because it start, keep, keeps you giving that conviction and that injection. So it's, it's the same number here. Uh, these numbers, you know it, but I'm just reiterating it for your, for, for, for your benefit. Uh, look at how drastic and how quick the change could be. Last year, Look at equity alone. Obviously, fixed income is a, is, a, is a difficult story. I don't want to touch it right now. But look at equity. Last year, the total gross sales in equity was about 42,000 crores in the year, so which was about 3,500 crores a month, right? This year, in the first four months, you have done almost that at an average of 10,000 10, crores a month in the first four months. So three times the number and I, I know we did a conference in August uh, last and the topic of that conference in August, uh, 8th August to be precise, was hope amidst despair. There was so much despair that I think the topic was, was this thing. And today within, within such a short period of time, the numbers are that in the first four months, you have actually crossed the whole last year gross sales. The net sales last year, and if I remove arbitrage, that's an exciting category to be in now. But if you remove that, you were about 16,000 crores uh, negative. Uh, you're almost reaching there in the first four months. Scale, again, I am, I am only highlighting once again that when the sh shifts happen, the trends happen, they could be swift, they could be large, and are we, it is important from our perspective to understand that are we ready to, for those large shifts in the, in the marketplace. Again, these are for some numbers, you could see it, you know, last year, every month, including SIPs, we were doing 3,500 crores a month the entire industry out of which, you know, the, the worst was in September, you see, September 13, 1200 crores, out of which 1250, half of it was SIP. So practically we were doing 1200 crores. Now that 1200 crores has gone up to 13,000, 18,000 crores. So how is IFA facing this challenge or how is this, this opportunity uh, in this thing? Uh, uh, they are consistently consolidating their position. If in the distribution space, independent financial advisors in the last two years have increased their market share by almost about 3%. I think you should give a round of applause to all of you. I think that's, that's, that's something which is, which is heartening to see that the model which is so aligned to the customer is finally slowly but steadily growing and I have no doubt in my mind that this business proportion 
will continue to grow in the times to come. Uh, while, while it is important to see but uh, you know somehow when I this, this slide was important again it is a busy slide but it was important to see while the overall numbers are growing but somehow at least in this equity space I feel uh, the conviction uh, and I, I might be wrong so, so uh, pardon me for that the conviction at least in the in this space on a, on a generic basis has been much uh, you know uh, lesser than, than, than the other peers in the distribution space for this community as at a large as a part. So look at it in this, in this space in this year the share of IFAs on the net sales is only about 16 percent. And the share in gross sales is about 31 percent. Now it is important to have this number in mind because IFAs today in equity you know hold 50 percent of the total AUM. 50 percent of the total AUM is held by IFAs but their share in this in this last few months of this rally or this business growth has been lesser than what they hold. I do not know if this is to do with the conviction of, of, the, of the fraternity at large. But I, I just want to ask you this question, if the business or if in the first four months the business is three times, grown three times on an average every month, has your own equity business grown in the same proportion or no, yes or no? Yes or no? That does not reflect in these numbers unfortunately. While some of you, you know your large partners you might be there but uh, you know I, I leave that decision to you but that is at least not showing in the in these numbers at this point of time. So equity look at the share of equity I think equity because of the numbers which I showed you in the in the recent in the last few months rally. Uh, IFAs have steadily you know marginally lost, it is not a big, lo big loss but I think there is some trend towards, towards and maybe it is to do with conviction, maybe it is to do with the previous fact of the previous few years the client has been with you and has seen ups and downs so I you know I really do not know. But, but uh, while there is a great overall story building up but in the last few months uh, uh, you know we have seen this trend. I think you know this is one slide I showed you last year as well and I am showing you again and this is with the latest data and it keeps on reinforcing the fact that people who are going to be in this business and who are going to sustain in this business and scale up in this business are only two kinds of people. One, who would only one in fact who would, who, would, who would change with time and would upgrade, change, get these guys. There were a lot of people in this big you know you this white, white line uh, the, the the air ends between 30,000 to 70,000 you know you, you all of you know uh, why they were not successful. So you know the if you see the trend the air ends before the maximum business is coming from air ends who are before 2006 and, and the air ends who have come in after 2008-9. People who came between 2006 and 2009 uh, you know are, are, are successful. You, you all know the reason right? So, and, and anyone who has come in uh, between 2006-9 uh, you know it is not a it is a generic statement do not take personally because some of them have done well as well. But the fact is that they saw very easy times and they thought that this business is too easy to be in to make money in is very easy. So people who came in before 2006-5 uh, and people who came in after 2009 really had work you know had had the real uh, uh, you know wanted to see the you know had, had seen tough times and had a very conscious call of getting into the industry. So I, you know it is very simple uh, looks simple but I am sure it is not as simple as that. What we feel I think the you know uh, the business model is going to build up. Uh, we have seen right from execution to a mix of execution and advice and finally it will move towards now goal planning and finally into financial advisory. That is that's the logical growth of this business and, and I keep on seeing you know goal planning, uh, financial planning all of that coming in and I think that is a logical way of growing this and this would be compounded with embedded solutions, embedded advices uh, for people who cannot get into complete advisory it will be embedded solution products, embedded advice products which will be there. Uh, 
uh, important, I think it will be for all of us in this business, I think the only edge uh, here is knowledge. And I think we all need to continue to uh, increase uh, our, upgrade our knowledge skills in this thing. And that, that would be one big differentiator. Finally, I think technology, uh, I'm sure, uh, uh, you know, we are in the Next Advisors Forum. They, they are the biggest proponents of technology. Uh, uh, one thing which is very important, I'll show you that slide uh, slightly later, but I think how technology and what is one reason why if you would have, um, you know, got this technology or used this technology a few years back, then this straight line or negative growth of investors between 2008 and 14 could have been uh, much better. I would say it wouldn't have been, you know, reversed, but it would have been much better. The graph would have been much better. So I think this is this is uh, what we feel is the uh, there is the requirement of this facelift and say it's a it's a continuous improvement from a traditional family business to a professional setup from a product pusher to a solution provider, skewed asset class to asset allocation. Uh, I think from a random relationship management to CRM tools, business driven by need reference from formal client sourcing, uh, comprehensive financial planning. You know I think maybe fee charging as well and uh, uh, you know seeking professional certificates and I think that's, that's something which is upgrading skills uh, 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 as well. So uh, I think it's very simple while it looks simple but I think really we need to think about are we, are we really uh, both as a financial planner as a banker to the client in his, in his perspective in his mind are we really a banker to the, to the client. So what are we doing? Uh, so I, uh, you know, don't want to bore you with, but I think there are innovations which we are focusing on. Some of these, we are ourselves very excited while in scale, it might be today low, but you know, whether it was ATM card, whether it was SIP insurance, whether it was first gold fund, uh, uh, you know, whether it is now a portfolio SIP, now you upgrade yourself right, rather than taking only one asset class SIP, why within, you know, 5,000 bucks, why can't you have uh, 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 all the asset classes in one? So all of that is something, but this is one slide which is important from a technology perspective as well. Now look at it, you keep on hearing in newspapers that you know you are, the mutual fund industry is losing folios, right? Every year, for the last few years, you keep on hearing that. And that's true, but look at which, which kind of people are leaving the industry. The people who are leaving the industry are retail investors, retail folios, which are defined by, by in Amphi and SEBI as less than one lakh rupee folios. So last year, we lost, the industry lost about 33 lakh folios. Out of which, actually if you re remove advised folios, if I may say those folios which are large and they are advised by all of you, they were actually positive, but unadvised folios or unreachable folios, we have lost about 38 lakh folios. And that is the trend which continues. Now I know something is, you know, so it's, so a lot of you will come in that we, we, we can't service these people. It is unviable to service these people at this cost. It is difficult sell, but therein the role of technology comes in. And you need to really build up, and especially people who are excited or who wants to build up the retail franchise in the next few years, really need to look at technology from that perspective. Uh, you know, and I think just very small number, uh, uh, India has about 200 million internet users, that is 10 times the population of Australia. So 10 times the population of Australia, even in our segment, which is the MF target segment, so to say, there are two crore or 20 million investors who are, so to say, the MF target segment, and they're digitally enabled. Have we been able to reach out to them? Is there a potential to reach out to them? Mutual fund today, the on online penetration is only 4%, and online transactions are growing by almost about 35% CAGR. So look at leveraging technology for service, business learning, I think uh, from our perspective, we, we have this small portal, uh, 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 which is rmfpartners.com. It gives you, uh, you know, entire uh, uh, bouquet of content management, activity, lead management, support, customer campaigns, reports, learning, everything which is, which is possible. We are trying to scale up this and trying to see that if we can make it much more relevant and more and more relevant for your requirements. 
So this is something which we have initiated that is, you know, specially for people who want to do retail but, but are not able to service them. So this is something which we have launched which is known as distributor initiated transaction. So I no longer want to send a guy to pick up an application in Borivili. You know, if the mandate is there, 